Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ, and Reconciling Ministries Congregation's first ever Easter sunrise service. So we, for those who might not know, we uh, were, uh, Mike Shear and I were co-founders of Bloom in 2002, and for many, we began Sunday morning services over at the uh, Palapas Art Garden and Nursery, which is now a development <laughs> over uh, on the other side of 111. And we've been here since uh, 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 July, of, or late June of 2004. So this is our first time being together as a congregation. I'm a little moved. It's our first time being together in, as a congregation uh, in person in more than a year. So I'm glad to be here on Easter. And we're grateful for this uh, exception to the rule uh, from the Palm Springs uh, uh, Parks and Recreation Department, City Administration. Um, I do have the unfortunate task to say that um, we hope that the service will not be too long because restrooms are not available. Um, and so uh, the I just got to say that. I'm sorry. That was one of the things. Um, so be aware of that. Now that that's taken care of, we are grateful today to have you with us. Uh, Bloom the Desert Ministries as the United Church of Christ is committed to the modern motto that says, whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And so it is from the very beginning that we have been welcoming people from a wide variety of uh, beliefs and understandings and 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 uh, uh, status and the way people love one another and the way people identify we welcome people who are straight and gay and bisexual we know that god's creation involves identities across the spectrum we welcome people who are transgender gender non-declaring gender non-binary cisgender we welcome people who are um uh, black and white and red and yellow and brown. It is our desire to welcome persons as Jesus would, as you see yourself from the inside out, rather than an identity we would foist upon you. So we welcome you here today. Thank you for doing the check-in as we have. Uh, if you have not, please um, see someone at the welcome table and provide for contact tracing your email and name. Uh, and uh, that sort of information. We're also grateful to participating in our service today to have as leader, as readers and uh, liturgists, uh, Linda Toland and Linda Lang and Ron and Kathy Humphrey. Uh, we're grateful for Mike Shear as well today. Um, we are grateful for uh, uh, Jack McClelland and Mike Termini and Mike Kreiser and Alan Weaver for helping with uh, welcoming folks and Alan keeping everything you know safe here in the lectern area and we are grateful for uh, Randy and Carlos uh, who have come to do the setup and arrived before 5 a.m. Uh, in order for us to be ready and we're grateful we dealt with things that were not uh, uh, supposed to happen and we're moving forward uh, meaning the grass is wet, but it wasn't supposed to be, but I cannot control the sun nor city sprinklers, um, even though I try, uh, but that's me. We're also grateful today to have this wonderful music uh, with our music director, Ken Forney, uh, and Matthew Richards and Larry Demas, 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 Demas Larry Demas, uh, both uh, referred to us by our friend Dean McDowell from the Desert Winds Freedom Band, we're grateful for these community relationships and the way we're able to foster creativity and connectivity uh, throughout our community. We're grateful for Hugo being here running the sound system for the first time in like more than a year. So that was a little bit of those beginning, beginning setup situations. And uh, Hugo will be over running our tech for the Facebook Live broadcast at 10 o'clock. And we're grateful today for the flowers that will appear soon on the worship center. 
given uh, in symbolic of the living Christ and uh, of Easter and resurrection, lilies, off the trumpet lilies, uh, sounding the good word, offered to the glory of God by Carl and Linda Tolan in celebration of Easter. The music for centering today as we uh, is provided by our musicians, special musicians, Great is thy faithfulness, and because he lives, that will be followed by our opening hymn, I Come to the Garden Alone, uh, and uh, the music may be found in your song sheets at the back of the bulletin. Uh, we receive this and know that now is the time to transition. From being scattered out into the world, we gather in this one place, our veritable garden, our time together here, and uh, we are discovering something new. Let us be as people have done for centuries, bringing our heart and soul and mind and strength together for the worship of God and the care for one another. Let us be together. Please join me in this opening prayer. Now in prayer, we welcome God's spiritual embrace. Together, we say, we praise your name for sending Christ with the promise of a new life. We scatter the clouds of darkness so that our eyes can behold the truth of your love. We replace the calamity of death with an affirmation of life without ending. In the earth upon our being, the blue ray of sunlight, bring the light to illumine our world with the presence of your redeeming grace. As we stand on the threshold of your magnificence, be pleased with our worship as we utter your name. With tender care, dear God, receive now our silent prayers. To all of our silent prayers, people say, Amen. 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 Receive now these words of encouragement. God graced the world with reason in the form of Jesus Christ. God energizes us to create justice, so a new world of love and blessing is empowered. Go for it. Amen. Amen. Let us now receive the good news. Please stand as you are able for the acclamation. Is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day our God has made. We rejoice. Our God who was, is, and evermore shall be. To you belong all praise and glory. Angels in heaven announce the dawn of your eternal order. Trumpets herald Christ's victory as the stone is rolled away. Our mouths are opened to proclaim your mercies. We lift our hearts to you, our friends, and our neighbors. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Shalom, salam, ping on, pause, peace. Amen. Our gospel reading comes today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought perfumed oils so that they could anoint Jesus. Very early, just after sunrise on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked, they found that the huge stone had been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. They were very frightened, but the youth reassured them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. See the place where they laid him? Now go and tell the disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. 
They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. But they said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Psalm 118, verses 14 through 24. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. Ray shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the upright. Yahweh's right hand is doing mighty acts. Yahweh's right, what, right hand is winning. Yahweh's right hand is doing mighty acts. No, I will not die. I will live to proclaim the deeds of Yahweh. Though Yahweh has disciplined me often, I am not abandoned to death. Open the gates of justice for me. Let me come in and thank you, Yahweh. This is the gate of Yahweh, and only the upright can enter. Thank you for hearing me, for saving me. It was the stone with which the builders rejected that became the keystone. This is Yahweh's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day Yahweh has made. Let us celebrate with joy. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. Our second gospel reading comes from John 21 through 18. And we'd like to have you read along with us, alternating women and men. <laughs> Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She, she saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and told them, the rabbi has been taken from the tomb. We don't know where they have put Jesus. Peter and the other disciples started out toward the tomb. They were running from side to side. But when the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first, he didn't enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the linen wrappings on the ground. Then Simon Peter and I entered the tomb. He observed the linen wrappings on the ground. He saw the piece of cloth that had covered Jesus for a while, so I rolled up in the place by itself. And then the disciples went on to the tomb and went in. He saw and he believed, as yet they don't understand the scripture that Jesus to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Meanwhile, Mary stood weeping beside the tomb. Even as she wept, she stooped to peer inside, and there she saw two angels in dazzling robes. One was seated at the head, and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had lain. They asked her, Why are you weeping? She answered them, Because they have taken away my rabbi, and I don't know where they have put the body. No sooner had she said this, and she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. She asked her, Why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? She supposed it was the gardener. So she said, Please, if you're the one who carried Jesus away, tell me where you've laid the body, and I will take it away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Don't hold on to me, for I have not ascended into the Father God. Rather, go to the sisters and brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your God, my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to the disciples. I have seen the teacher, she announced. Then she reported what the Savior had said to her. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. The fancy words I learned one time in seminary was kairos and kronos. 
um, uh, uh, the, the one, the latter, meant human time, our time marching along. Kairos was God's time, uh, Christ's time. Uh, I think that the sun rose in, in, in just the right time yeah. today, and we're grateful for that. Let us pray. God, continue to bless us, not only in the reminders of your turning earth, but in the love and care we have for each other. Continue to bless us as we hear the birds chirp and sense the brilliance of nature all around us. Continue to bless us as we are with one another on this special day in our faith and continue to bless us as we move through this service and continue to worship you and care for each other. As people have done for so long, we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock, our solid rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In a recent conversation, it occurred to me that I ought to give a 25 words or less description of the events and meaning of Easter for Christians. Now being a preacher, I had the good sense to realize that while that task was my responsibility, giving this sort of story, the limitation I placed upon myself was impossible. So I tried to be brief, which is what I'm trying to also do today, but we shall see. I explained Easter is the Sunday that we remember and tell the story of our faith that says Jesus rose from the dead after being betrayed and abandoned by some of his friends during his execution by a foreign occupying, foreign occupying force. Now, don't hold me too close to that, but that's 38 words. I also said that different people think differently about this particular story, and I went further to say that each of our four Gospels tells the story, and all do so with slight differences. But there are three commonalities that I remember and want to share. All four Gospels say that the first people to discover the resurrection of Jesus were women. Mary Magdalene in, in each situation is either alone or with others. And all the stories say that they went to the grave early on a Sunday, the first day of the week after the Sabbath. And finally, all four stories say the stone that should have sealed the tomb, the borrowed tomb where Jesus' body had been laid was not covering the door when they arrived as they expected. Now there are many other details in these four stories and they vary quite a bit. And as people who come to our Wednesday night Bible bites, you know, Bible study know I can go on and on about why there are these various differences. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to get into those details because I don't think they're as important as the ones for today that are common to each of the gospels. I think it's important to know that the four Gospels about Easter, it's important to know that the four stories about Easter morning are different from each other. And if you're anything like me, we've been fed an amalgamated version of these magnificent stories. It's only been in the last seven years the last several years that I've learned and concluded that it's good for us to know how clearly these differences exist because that helps us grasp something about what the writers were thinking and we can form our own thoughts more authentically but if we jam all four versions all four scenes together without distinction it's as if we ran a banquet through a food processor we end up with a whole lot of chopped something. And really, we can't say anything more about that. But still, it tastes good. As a pastor in the 21st century, I can never let go of my teacher training and educational bent. 
I can't help pointing out the distinctions like this because I think they help us Christians be actual followers of Christ. We can relate better to people when we have a better understanding of our faith heritage. We can nurture ourselves with something more than baby food. So on each of these three com commonalities for Easter morning, let's pause for only a moment to bring it into our lives. First, it was early in the morning, like here we are. Every day of our life begins in the morning. When we wake up, whether we are bed bound or bound on a world cruise, the moment we open our eyes is our new day. The moment you open your eyes is your new day. It's your new morning of possibilities. It's a new morning for possibilities for all of us. The Easter story gives us a new morning of creation. The great Methodist founder John Wesley considered Easter the eighth day of creation. That's one of the reasons he thought that when people build church buildings, uh, the building shape ought to be an octagon because the eight sides would represent the eternal fullness of God's creation. When we wake up on Easter morning each year, we rise again and have the opportunity to say again, even after the darkest news and media events, such as we have been experiencing, the sun shines. Even when there are clouds, the sun is shining. And we have something to do, something important to find for ourselves. Secondly, Mary Magdalene is one of the women of our faith. I suppose we don't spend more time with Mary Magdalene because there's no book attributed to her. We do not have her writings in our canon of scripture. And other things have been written about her by subsequent men that were not very favorable. The misogyny that we see today in our workplaces, in our politics, the misogyny we see today and in our church, the misogyny we see today was at work then too. We would do ourselves a favor if we learned and honored more about this Mary, because obviously she was important to the early church she appears in every single one of the Easter morning stories. Leaving this Mary there is a shame. We should name more babies after Mary Magdalene. That would be a good indi indication of good change in gender roles and expectations. The last common point is the large rounded stone used to close off more uh, the doors of tombs. In our gospel stories, when Mary M arrives, the stone is no longer at blocking the door of the tomb. Reading the details, we can figure the gospel writers had difficulty dealing with the obvious challenge of that heavy stone blocking the door. Part of the resurrection miracle story given to us is that one of the discoveries that the women make is that they themselves did not have to roll away the stone. In one story, there's an earthquake, and the angel that they found rolled it away. And in others, it's already moved. No further explanation offered. Now we can draw metaphors and analogies based upon that stone, that stone being taken away. It's kind of silly to think that a stone would have to be rolled away in order for angels and the risen Christ to leave the tomb. But the paranormal point isn't about the physics of this situation. It's more about the metaphysics. This is a new thing and we cannot explain how it all works. The stone being rolled away is the removal of the barriers so that 
entirely new life can emerge. The assumed rules of the ordinary life are pushed aside. We have to move away our barriers in order for what is really the best for humanity and creation to wake up. On this repeating eighth day and find what God is doing for us all. Let's not get caught up in or trip over details in a story with such important basics. Every morning presents an opportunity to do something important, even spectacular. Women are essential to the message of our Christian miracle and mission. Let's get on with the task of doing what we know we need to do. Then the barriers will fall. That's when we can discover the rest of our stories. These are small elements of our Easter story that can give us great hope. Let's fit ourselves into this early morning experience and know that when we go from here, what needs to happen can happen. And as the saying goes, yes, we can. Just as Mary M. told the story that draws us together, we are called to tell our community story and our personal stories so the goodness we share benefits others too. Find a way. The heartbreaks, challenges, and offenses that wash over us every day need not overwhelm us. The miraculous love of God and community are with us for good. Please hear that as good news and tell others. We can do this mission in our daily lives in the ways that we work and volunteer and vote and how we interact on more than just Sundays. Sundays are only the beginning of the week, remember? Sundays are the first day of the new week. The powers of the universe want more for us and from us than we are currently experiencing and giving. As we embrace and digest the spectacular tidbits of Easter morning, we will be well nourished and prepared for the tasks of Christian mission we share. Well, that was certainly more than 25 words. And yet, thanks be to God. Amen. Oh God, you unconditionally share your favored child with the world. On this holy day, receive our offerings as an affirmation of our commitment to be your faithful followers. Strengthen our ability to be gifted stewards of your created world. We pray in the name of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ, our Messiah. Amen. Amen.